and welcome to another episode of Focus on Tomorrow. I am your host, Will Barroso. For those of you that don't know, Focus on Tomorrow is a nonprofit located in Chicago, Illinois. You can find us on the web at www.focus-on-tomorrow.org. And you can email us at info at focus-on-tomorrow.org. A little background before I introduce my guest here, a little background on Focus on Tomorrow. Focus on Tomorrow is an education nonprofit uh, that specializes in a video pr production curriculum. Uh, we basically take high school students from all throughout the city of Chicago and work with them to develop small, uh, short little narratives um, on video that tell stories about all kinds of uh, different things that happen um, throughout the city. Today, my guest is Manny Velasquez, who is a student at Clemente High School and participating in our Focus on Tomorrow program. Welcome, Manny. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm okay. Good. Um, we br we're bringing Manny on to talk a little bit about his experience at Focus on Tomorrow and uh, what he's getting out of it and his future. Um, so I, I guess my, my first question to you, Manny, is why did you choose to enroll in our video production program? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I didn't really know about it. It was my, my teacher who told me about it, and she said that she wanted to, she, she knew that I wanted to go to, to, to New York after I left high school to uh, make films. And then she said, uh, she said, well, you're going to need money, and I never had a job. So she's like, well, I'm going to try to work real hard to get uh, this job for you, because um, I know that you keep telling me that you don't want to work at McDonald's, and you want to work at a place that you could do something that you love. And then that's when um, she uh, called you, <laughs> and then, <laughs> well, now we're here. And and let me say, your your teacher, Miss uh, Am Amador, yeah, Amador, is fantastic, and and I commend a lot of these teachers um, throughout the city because that is how a lot of, you know, our, our news spreads. You know that that we are available. A lot of teachers just you know recommend us to their students, and that's great. Um, so you came to our program and you started making uh, short videos. So why don't you tell us about the projects that you've worked well, on? Well, this is the thing I find interesting about the videos I, I made here is because I, I, I'm a filmmaker and I like movies and I, I don't really like documentaries and stuff. But when I came um, here, I noticed that like I kind of started making experimental videos and I made a documentary called Once Upon a Time in Chicago. And it was like about uh, Chicago and how it was the film capital of the, the um, back then, the silent film era. And um, I, one thing that I like, I like filming and like being here and making videos because it's the only place I don't have to make a movie or a film. Or I don't have to be held responsible like for every single thing. Because when I make films, I feel like I have to... I have to be like in control, the director, the producer, the writer, the editor, everything. And it's like, it, it drives me crazy. At least here I have like um, a little bit of collaboration. And I get to see other kids make videos too. I, I don't see that at school at all. Uh, a lot of kids, they don't, they don't really care about this program or filming or anything. They just use it for advantages. And I'm like the only one there that really loves it. Not here, but at school. If yeah. we're coming here, I see other kids that like it. And I see how t talented other people are and how they like editing and all that. I'm like, wow, you know, I'm not alone. I thought I was always alone, that I was like a weirdo that liked, you know, making videos and stuff, but no, I'm not. There's other people like me. Absolutely, yeah. I, I actually, I took t television production in high school as well, and I remember there were a lot of students in that program that were just there yeah, just, just for, for an elective credit. Um, but it's cool that you're there and you're passionate about it. We actually have the video that you created at uh, Focus on Tomorrow. Uh, it's called Once Upon a Time in yeah. Chicago, right? <laughs> um, so we'll talk about it afterwards, but first I want to show it. Uh, here is Once Upon a Time in Chicago. which uh, uh, that's where the coin phrase came from. Chicago was the film capital at the time. Before World War I, uh, the SNA Film Corporation uh, had, a, had a major studio operation here, and Charlie Chaplin worked, well, 23 days in Chicago only before he went to, to California. But he shot a film here. The John Hughes 16 Candles, which was shot in Chicago. Uh, 
Um, I remember the Blues Brothers when they came out, it was like the be all end all, and I got to see that in the movies. From what we see in those movies that is Chicago, doesn't really look like our city anymore. And that's, it's become kind of this great, valuable uh, time capsule of what the city used to look like. It's also a great reminder in things like the Blues Brothers, especially where they are tearing up downtown in this car chase, that uh, uh, it, this is great behind the scenes history with that because the, 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 uh, the elder Mayor Daly never would have allowed that scene, uh, that movie to be shot here. But then Jane Byrne comes along and says, fine, you can, you can tear up Daly Plaza if you like, Don't, you know, just, just clean it up afterwards. And, that, and that's kind of the great thing about that, that car chase. Risky business was like the thing when it first came out. And, and I remember uh, hearing a story about Tom Cruise going to the audition and um, from my, my teacher actually, it wasn't Bad Boys, it was, it was Tom Cruise. And uh, he auditioned, and, and the producers didn't really care for him much. And then my, uh, uh, my, my mentor was there, and he actually put in a good word for Tom Cruise. And like two days later, he actually got the part. So that was a cute story. Um, Transformer film that really took a lot of weeks and closed a lot of streets in Chicago. That's, that's interesting to see your skyline up there on the big screen, but... Again, I get such a CGI headache, especially with the Transformers movies. That, uh, like, for me, they couldn't. It, it didn't have to be filmed anywhere near Chicago. It all looks completely fake, anyway. And then, you know, in the '80s, we had a, another wave of wonderful uh, films that came out as well. And uh, I remember when they were shooting Wildcats with Goldie Hawn. I went to the audition for an extra, and actually got the part to play an extra that had to pretend she was cold and it was like 96 degrees outside. And... Gee, you bitch! Your mama said you ugly! U-G-L-Y-N! You ain't got no alibi! You ugly! What? What? You ugly! I was here wearing a winter jacket, a hat, scarf, gloves, with my sister, and it was like 98 degrees, and we had to pretend it was cold and shivering, but it was cool because I got, I got a chance to meet Goldie Hawn. It's always a struggle for the state government to be convinced that um, offering film production companies uh, tax incentives and tax breaks to come and bring their projects here. It's hard, it's hard for those to get re-upped in the state budgets because a lot of people are not convinced that offering people that kind of discount is actually good for the tax base. Um, they're not necessarily convinced that um, the money that a film crew will spend on hotels and meals and hiring local people is really worth the breaks they're offering. But, um, I mean, I'm prejudiced because I'm a film critic. I want to see that activity. I think Chicago is just great on camera. It's a photogenic city. And again, it's not one kind of city. It's a million kinds of cities all sharing the same space. Uh, um, so I think, I think because it doesn't feel fished out yet, and I, I, I think people, people have a harder time filming in New York just to, because I think there's a little more permitting process and a little more expense to go through. It's always going to be more, more economical to shoot here rather than New York. The question is, can you convince a film crew of any size to film here as opposed to places like? Albuquerque in New Orleans. Films, some of the most recent films that have been shot here are the most, you know, the ones that um, are mainstream right now is Divergent, Transformers, or, um, I believe the um, Jupiter Ascending with uh, Mila Kunis was also shot in here in Chicago. So there's a ton of films that we really don't know about, but if you actually look it up, there's there's a whole array of list of, of films that, like, wow, I didn't know that was shot. North by Northwest, that was another one. Uh, an Alfred Hitchcock movie, right? That um, was shot on LaSalle. We've got a pretty healthy amount of feature film and uh, television activity here because we've got... A, a beautiful city with a lot of richness. The studio space that can attract a series and really get people sort of thinking seriously about, okay, is it, is it competitively priced? Can we film in Chicago? And mainly, and this is the main thing, 
does it offer an interesting variety of locations? And the answer is yes, because it looks like a great American city and you can kind of make it look any way you want. Some of the history, old history of Chicago that comes along with it. So, you know, when you attach a film to say it was shot here in Chicago, it adds that little extra value to it where people actually want to, oh, I want to check it out, it was shot in Chicago. That was great, Manny. Uh, good job. Congratulations. Um, so I know why you chose that topic. You're, you're into film. You're passionate uh -huh. about films. Um, so let me ask you, in that movie, I'm sorry, in that uh, video, you got to interview yeah. Michael Phillips. Uh -huh. What was that like? Honestly, I never really met like a famous person like that would actually talk to me. <laughs> or just like just be like, who's that kid? It was really interesting uh, meeting him because I, for the first time, I would be like, look at him like, he was such a nice guy, and his opinion on things, it, it, it mattered, you know? It's weird when, like, you don't really care about what anyone thinks, but then when, like, some film critic comes and he says something, like, wow, he knows what he's talking about. Like, I, I want to know more about what he knows, you know? Like, because I love movies, and, and um, I watch so many different types of films, and, and he probably seen every movie I saw, you know? He could probably be like, yeah, that was a good one, that sucked. But I was like, seeing, like... Being in, like, especially being in the Chicago Tribute, because we went, we went to the building and seeing how nice that building is, and it was, it was a great experience. Like, I, I, no, not even that. It was an opportunity, a great opportunity to meet, meet someone. Hopefully, um, one day he'll get to uh, critique my films. <laughs> Hopefully, good reviews. <laughs> that would be even, amazing. Yeah, even if bad reviews, still good. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Now, um, pertaining to this project, mm -hmm. what were some of the more challenging aspects of it? Oh, the challenging a aspects is I, I like making things really long, so I wanted to make this video like 30 minutes. So I thought like, yeah, that's not going to work. So that was one of the challenging things, cutting out what what a filmmaker calls it's like it's love. You know, it's like it's like your baby, this footage you film. And, and when, you, when you film a lot of footage and, and you just don't want to get rid of a lot of stuff, you're like, no, I have to keep that. And then they're like, no, that doesn't make any sense. You don't need it. And you're like, oh, but... But this, but that, and they're like, still, you don't need it in there. So I had to cut so much stuff that I wanted. I want, if it was, if it was up to me, like, even though it kind of was, but, you know, if it was really up to me, I would have put the whole interview, but then it kind of would have made it long and dragged. And so I just cut out the the good part of it, you know, but I, I still felt like it sh I should make an extended version of it. But yeah. Yeah, you know, that's, that's a good point. I should tell our audience that most of our students uh, create videos that are about one and a half to two minutes in length. Um, and this video was about six minutes, yeah, correct? six minutes. Yeah, so what was it at before you cut it down? Well, it was at like, obviously less than like 15 minutes, <laughs> but it wasn't that good at all. And it was like, yeah, it kept going and going. Yeah. I was like, if it was like that, I'd rather just make like a feature length sure. documentary and get like filmmakers from Chicago, you know, like and producers, writers, all that stuff and put it all in there. Not just two interviews. And That's you why. Yeah, you still have the opportunity to yeah, do that. I, I mean, you have. Yeah, and I still got those interviews. Yeah. So if I want to ever make a Great. good, you know, documentary on Chicago, you know, yeah. but I want to say the reason I made a documentary on Chicago it wasn't just because I love films. Well, it kind of was, but, <laughs> but, but it was because I wanted like, j like people in the community, to know that you know Chicago isn't just a bad city and it isn't Chirac only. You know, it's it's we could make like films here. Like, I'm. I believe that, I don't know, Chicago is a very um, underground city and it is really easy to, to make movies at other than like New York or Los Angeles. But we don't have, I feel like we don't have that many like filmmakers, you know, that, that, um, that, that have the passion like, like I do. But. Well, a lot of production does come to Chicago now and uh, yeah. I think people are starting to discover that there are a lot of benefits to shooting here. So who knows, maybe you'll be working on one of those sets soon. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> so so let, let's step outside of Focus on Tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you're mentioning you're, you're, you're a filmmaker. Um, how did you how did you find out that you were when I was interested a, in films? When yeah. I was a, this is interesting, because when I was a kid, I, I was always alone. I, I was always by myself, you know, like my brothers and sisters, they always ch like chilled with their own little crowd, which was themselves. And I was I never had nothing, to be honest. And the only thing I had was TV, <laughs> like every other kid. But I didn't like TV. I liked m films, you know. So uh, I was down. I, w I was always be downstairs in my basement, and there would be nothing but VHS tapes everywhere. V old VHS tapes. So I would like look at these movies, and I was just like, like be stunned by the artwork and the name, and that would be interesting to me. I'm like, this seems like an interesting movie, and I'll play it, and I would watch it. 
And then I would just be like, wow, these movies are great. But then I started to realize that when I would watch movies on television or or even go to the theaters and stuff, I would notice that I would I would drill the director, actors, um, um, composer, editor's name in my head. So when I seen their name, like, I would be like, oh my God, that was a Stephen King movie, you know, or like, you know, like stuff like that. I would get more familiar and, and I would go more back, like, the older I got, the more, like, I would start from films from the 90s, then I will go from the 80s, and from the 70s, and I know films from the silent era, and it's like, oh my god, like, how did I do this? How how did I get all this time to watch these movies, you know? And, and I didn't want to just watch movies all my life. It, it was when I went to the Portage Theater once, and I, I saw this man. He was a he was really, really smart man, and he, he did nothing but just sell movie posters and I brought two posters I brought the remake of the fog and lovely bones that movie which wow. the fog was bad but I, I but anyway I brought those posters but he talked to me and he knew so much about films and what was on top of my head was I was like no offense but it was kind of a waste of like life if you knew so much stuff about movies and you didn't put it he was the type of person who I promise he could have made movies because he knew like the in and out of a film and I was only talking to him for like two hours there and I'm just like, I, I can't be this man. Cause I would do that. That would be me. If 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 I didn't become a filmmaker, I would be a movie buff or mm -hmm. like a, you know nothing but movie. I would probably be working at blockbuster videos if that was around. <laughs> if they know? were around, yeah. right? Yeah. But <laughs> and I'm like, no, I I can't work at a video place. I have to make movies and mm -hmm. and you know I, I had I can't really say I have stories to tell now. I do, but at the time I didn't. I started like film film making films when I was ten, eleven. So I yeah so. After that, it was like, it, uh, I made films that was really bad, and then I progressed. And now you're what, 17? I'm Eight. 17 okay. now, and I, I'm on I, my second feature length. That's film. great. That's fantastic. So we have a clip of one of them. Yeah. Uh, it's called Savage High. That's my right. first feature length. Okay, this is your first feature length. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's take a quick look at this clip of Savage High, and then we'll come back and we'll chat about All it. Right. All right. Shut up and listen to me really closely, Ruby. What is it, Ruby? Are you okay? It's just, the past few hours, my life has changed in so many levels. Okay, class. I know it's been a difficult week for all of us. It's the school, Ruby. Something really bad is happening inside of Clemente. I'm not joking, Ruby. I'm getting transferred to a school in New York. What's wrong with our school? Jesus Christ! I can't tell you, Ruby. They might be listening. Listening? Who? So who was trying to kill her? It was you! When I talked to Lucy, she told me that you kept calling her phone. And that you kept leaving her those absurd letters in her locker. They watch everything you do. Listen, Nika, I have no idea who you're fooling here, but absolutely nothing to do with Lucy's death. Then why did you harass her, huh? Tell me something! There's a secret hiding place in the library under the shelves. Everything you need to know is there. I can't freaking believe it. It can't be. That's when they changed the school name to Roberto Clemente. You don't want to be here. Something bad's going to happen. I don't think the police would consider that. All right, if I tell you, you have to believe me. Blackmailing little hag. I'll get you for this. You gotta cut off her right leg. She's trying to frame you. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful and safe night. That looks awesome. Um, yeah. Did you shoot that in 1984? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that that's it's funny that you say that because, um, as you can see, I'm really into old school stuff. So, sat my I wanted my first movie to be a homage to uh, like the Indie 80s films back from back then, you know. 
So I, the style is in a, a celluloid uh, film projection style, and that's why it sounds like distorted and all that. Yeah, so it's based in 1985, exactly like 30 years ago. <laughs> wow. So and there's no there's no cell phones, there's no screen TVs in the movie. That's why people get killed, and it's like, oh, why did they get killed? Why didn't you call someone? Yeah, you didn't have a phone, so. <laughs> and and how did you get that old look? Uh, they're gonna really judge me when I say this because you know filmmakers they you know nowadays you just film digital. I filmed mine's 30 percent. Um, VHS. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know. And uh, the rest percent on digital. But, <laughs> yeah, and then I, I, I um, distorted it and, like, rendered it, and I put some, like, effects on it to make it look like we filmed it on 35 millimeter. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't look like it's on 35 millimeter, but the style of it does. Yeah, so. No, it's pretty cool. But, I, but with the VHS thing, it really does, it did help um, come out, come, uh, um, pop out the old schoolness especially when you needed it like to be like oh that looks like a, that looks like that was shot in the 80s you know but yeah it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't actually it's funny cuz um today's the the uh, anniversary of like when I started filming uh, Savage High so I I, nice. I filmed it actually a, a year ago from today mm -hmm. and now today I'm filming my second film which is it's just funny how time flies real fast. So, so what are your goals with these movies? What do you plan to do with them? Well, the, well, the, this is the thing. I'm the movies I make are original films, and when I say original, um, there's no copyright. There's no um, uh, copyright music. Even though in that trailer there was a, it's a David Bowie song. That's not going to be in the movie. I have an ori original composer, costume designer, and um, they come out. Everything's original. So my plan is to submit these to film festivals and to like uh, distribute like distribution companies and stuff like that mostly film festivals and show it there and see if any producers you know might like it or anything you know but yeah that's my plans for these these movies um this feature like long films you know just in, independent indie films you know if you like um like low budget independent movies you'll you'll love this one i think maybe maybe this one or the other one but <laughs> and the other day you were telling me that you reached out to a local cinema theater Yes, it was it was the uh, Gene uh, Cisco Film Center. I I submit, submitted uh, the film, but the thing about it is, I uh, it has to be completed, and I'm done with it. But I need I, there's some like details, like the audio, as you could tell, and like some shots. It needs to be uh, touched up a little bit more. So after that, I'm gonna s s send that to them and send it to a few other festivals, you know. But now I'm working on my second film. Yeah. But I'm still editing. I'm like touching up the first one. So you're you're 17. You're mm -hmm. you're you're entering your senior year of yes. high school. You're you have college ahead of you. Mm -hmm. How do you find time to to make movies and then distribute them somehow? Well, <laughs> this is the funny thing about it, is that I, I don't do anything in my life but make movies or come up with writing. So when I go home, all I all I do is get a piece of paper, write down my ideas, go on the computer watch videos and get inspired so all of my day goes to making movies and and watching movies and like when I wake up in the morning I don't wake up thinking oh you know I gotta take the dog out I know it's not that it's like movies I have to film my movies not to film today because for me it's like there is no tomorrow you know I, 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 I that's what people get mad because I expect too much from like the actors I'm like we have to film it we have to film it now we have to film it right and they're like What's wrong with you? Like, we could do another day. I'm like, there is no other day. What if something happens tomorrow? You know, it's like you have to worry about sure. today. And then, and honestly, it comes out really good because um, that works out a lot. Yeah, some of those scenes look like you had quite a number of people in them. Yes. How hard was it to manage that really many people? Hard. I, like, and it's hard for this one now. Like, for this movie, um, like, for the what I'm doing now, I, I have to re, I had to re, what do you call them? Um, to restylize the storyline like three times, mm -hmm. and for the for Savage High, uh, the I had like a hundred actors, about over a hundred actors. I could guarantee you that who were in the movie, and that was kind of a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Organizing it's really hard. It took me no, ten months to shoot and put everything together for Savage High, and I I, I had a film with people separately, and that kind of messed up my my filmmaking process because I wanted like certain shots this way and I couldn't because it was just so many people and you know we're teenagers they, they want they don't want to make a movie some teenagers are like this is awesome I want to make a movie some teachers like some teenagers like I want to go home I want to do this do that I'm not gonna say well but they want to do other stuff you know and I'm just like you know it's really hard to find people who are into it you know mm -hmm. and I, I but with me I, I want to find people who love to make movies who who want to act and who want to edit and who want to design and 
and you could do a, you could do all that in one movie. You could be the costume designer, you could be the uh, musician, anything you ever want to be in life, you could do it in a movie cuz all the elements come together, you know? That's that's what I try finding when I um find the people, you know, making movies, but it's really hard to get people. It yeah. one thing I say is you never give up because I was going to give up like like 100 times with that movie and and so this one, and the, the one I'm doing now, and I've only been filming for like a week, and I right. just want to rip my hair off and just <laughs> be like, you know what, this is it, you guys are full of S, you know, like, no, you know, after a while, it's like, you can't expect too much, you have to calm down, you have to be like, this isn't what it's all about, you know, mm -hmm. I have to go out and do things too, and, and yeah, but it is kind of hard making films, especially when you're all by yourself, like sure. with me, I, I'm all by myself making movies, and you know, it's not like I'm making a documentary. I'm making a feature-length motion picture. I'm making a 100-minute movie with actors. You know, and and, not, and, and, and effects. No, yes, and right. bloody effects. We do <laughs> lots of gore, but it's it's not easy. It isn't easy, and it shouldn't be easy. You know, I don't consider. I I have fun with what I do. So to me, it is easy. You know, I'm not saying, oh yeah, I'll do this and do that. No, do it because you love it. I do it because I love it. Right. But after a while, it's like, oh, it drives you nuts. But that's the, when you overcome that, it's like it's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, it's worth it. I don't know. That's fantastic, man. Um, I, I I love your spirit. I love your enthusiasm mm -hmm. and your passion uh, for what you do. Um, and just sort of to bring this full circle, you know, th that's kind of what we're all about here at Focus on Tomorrow is working with young people like you who have dreams and aspirations. And uh, you know, even though we weren't a part of your of your film, mm -hmm. um, you know. If we can help you in any uh, in any way to just sort of develop and, and uh, you know achieve goals, that's what focus on tomorrow. Well, is I really would say like you guys did help because uh, I didn't have anything to edit on for my film, so yeah. that that was real help right there. But cool, yeah, yeah. Any yeah. way that we can possibly yeah, help, that's, that's fantastic. It is, and uh, you know we hope that you, our summer program is coming to an end now, yeah. but uh, you know we hope to see you again in the fall, um, and keep uh, keep working you know to towards that goal, man. Yeah. Well, you know, so we're, we're just out of time. Um, and I know that we could probably talk for hours oh, uh, yes. about movies, right? Yeah, I know. Um, uh, I, before we let yeah. you go, though, I do want to ask you, Godfather 1 or 2, which one do you like? Godfather... Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a tough I, question, right? Yeah, I mean, I saw all three, but it's like... Um, a 1. I can't, all I can't. Right, right. I like, uh... I, I'm a two guy, personally, No, two but, is good, especially... Yeah, they're both great. Depending on who was the yes. Godfather. It was like, <laughs> oh, yes, they did yeah. a good choice of casting. Yeah. Well, Manny, thank you very much for no, uh, joining me on the air today and talking a little bit about our program and sharing your experiences um, and your dreams, of course. Yeah. Uh, we wish you nothing but the best in the future. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to yeah. say is that, um, one thing. Sure. My name is Manny Velasquez, and I made... A film called Savage High, and my next film is Shockwave. So if you want, if you like um, horror films, you guys could check those two out. That's all I really want to say. <laughs> but other than that, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Mandy. So uh, let me just remind our audience that Focus on Tomorrow is a nonprofit located in Chicago, Illinois. You can find us on the web at www.focus-on-tomorrow.org, or you can email us at info at focus-on-tomorrow.org. Uh, on the website, there's more information about the programs that we host, and if you are a young person in high school or know a young person in high school that is interested in video production, definitely log on, uh, learn about our programs, and uh, enroll in them. And, uh, yeah, we will see you next time. Thank you, Manny. Thank you. Take care.